Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Sunday, March 11th, 10.47 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. What you're looking at is Shin Modake in the top two and the bottom right-hand corner, and Popoka Tapeto in the bottom left. And as I was doing research just about 45 minutes ago, you're going to see Shinmodake erupting now. Top left. This happened just 45 minutes ago. And we have three angles covering it, thanks to Volcano Watch, formerly Yuki Z. We'll leave you links down there. You should subscribe there. I just happened to be in the chat room, and this is what we saw. This appears to be uh, a moderate plume from the edge of the caldera here, probably going eight to 10,000 feet into the sky. I haven't analyzed it, but it's a single event. It might be ongoing. Um, we'll let this run and we'll check it later in the update, but this is happening just 45 minutes ago at Shinmodake. And we've got it nearly live for you. It's going to take an hour for me to put this up. So the first people that are watching this are going to see it about three hours after it happened. Look at the venting here. Take note. There's massive amounts of gas, which means there's magma filling up into that chamber. This could be setting up for a massive eruption on this volcano. Now this has to do with cosmic ray flux which we're going to talk about and do some science today. But we'll come back to that. There's big news. Third Nor'easter. A multitude of hazards expected from the Mid-Atlantic to New England starting tonight, coming through the Mid uh, Kentucky in uh, West Virginia. I'll show you the forecast. I'll leave you links to all of these articles. A new low will form south, off the southeast coast by Monday. It's going to dump some snow down here in West Virginia and Kentucky first. Go offshore here. Bomb out to 960 and deliver a wallop to Maine and Boston. Winter Storm Skyler is the name. We'll bring heavy snow. They're running out of letters, guys. Heavy snow, blowing snow to the northeast. Blizzard conditions possible in New England. Definitely, we're calling this a snow cane. I'm naming it the Skyler Snow Cane. Winter Storm Skyler Snow Cane will bring heavy snow, gusty winds to the northeast early this week. High impact in the nor'easter is becoming more likely in coastal New England. The timing of the biggest impacts will be late Monday through late Tuesday, Tuesday night. More than a foot of snow possible from eastern Mass to coastal Maine. Wind gusts to 60 are possible in eastern Massachusetts. Heads up, Jimmy. Coastal Maine, minor coastal flooding and erosion is likely, especially in areas heavily impacted with coastal storms in recent weeks. Tuesday morning commutes in coastal southeastern New England may be treacherous. That's how it's going to set up Monday. In the morning, looks like snow throughout Virginia, Charleston. Some freezing rain in Raleigh. And then Monday night is going to quickly move up the coast. Uh, strengthen here, bomb out. Maybe if it shifts a little bit inland, it could hit Long Island, New York. But we're looking at northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, eastern New York State, and Boston getting the most snow out of this. We'll check the GFS models. Moderate to level to locally heavy snow will be found in parts of eastern New England. Blizzard conditions are possible into Tuesday, including significant reductions in visibility for Tuesday morning commute in eastern Mass. Strong winds up to 60 are possible Tuesday morning along the Massachusetts coast and nearby islands. There are hurricane warnings off the coast currently, and we'll talk about it. So this is the high wind potential here. We're talking 50, 60 mile an hour gusts, Cape Cod, 
And this is if the storm sits where it was tracked 12 hours ago. So don't believe all the models. There's currently hurricane warnings uh, all the way from North Carolina up to New Brunswick, as well as winter storm warnings off the coast. Winter storm watch for all of New England, east and north of New York. And we have winter storm warnings throughout these states. It's currently snowing. You can come check them out. You just click on the links in this map that I'll provide you down here at weather.gov and check it out yourself. Now here we are at the GFS model. If we just run it through um, a few hours, you're going to see the snowfall totals happening right now. Six to eight inches here in central Kentucky. Six to eight inches here in West Virginia. Six to eight inches here in Virginia and North Carolina. And then the low is going to move offshore. Strengthen and then move up the coast. And if we just move it through real quick here. Into early Tuesday, you can see the snowfall begins already five inches in the Boston area. Tuesday afternoon, 10 inches in the Boston area. Tuesday evening, 11 in the Boston area, and the storm is moving up into Maine. And there's the end of the storm and end of Thursday. You're looking at 16 inches or more in northern New York, Whiteface area, northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire southern Maine. And then a second event will be coming through a little later in the week to just add a little gusto to your totals, bringing you up to a total of 24 plus predicted in, nor in the north of northern New York, northern Vermont, and northern New Hampshire. Grand solar minimum much? It's just a winter, it's just a spring storm. Baseball size hail batters the south. We covered it yesterday. The severe risk continues. This storm didn't just finish with 3.5 inch hail that we showed you last night. There were numerous reports of large damaging hail. There were uh, <laughs> dozens of vehicles completely obliterated. I'll leave you links to this article. It moved down south towards uh, Baton Rouge and New Orleans and there was more hail. This was a hail producer. Lots of hail, lots of videos on the hail. This was more of pea size hail down in the New Orleans area, but hail nonetheless. Let's talk about single lightning strike that kills 16, injures 140 in Rwanda. Boom! Positive lightning strikes are on the increase because of cosmic ray flux and are only going to get worse. So lightning strikes and kills like this are only going to get worse. And if you read this article, it is crazy. 16 people were killed and 140 injured after a lightning hit Seventh-day Adventist Church in Rwanda on Sunday. 140 have been rushed to the hospital. According to the mayor, a similar accident took pr place just the day before when lightning struck a group of 18 students, killing one of them. <laughs> Get out of Rwanda. <laughs> that's, a, that's a boom. And certainly, it's a heads up. Earthquake rattles East San Diego. Heads up, Willie. Not really a rattle. It's a 3.4. Nothing of note, except they made an article about it. Clearly, this is the quake right here. 3.4, 10 kilometers east northeast of Ocotillo Wells in California. We also have a small rumbler up here. Another 3.4 in Hollister. No quakes of note except in the oceans. 5.2 here off the coast of Puerto Rico. The Puerto of Ecuador. And we do have a quake here near Greece, but only 4.4 magnitude and offshore. The Kamchatka Peninsula has been moving, and this could be due to volcanic uptick. So we should be watching that because the volcanoes, they's exploding. Worldwide, Reventador, Dukono, Agung, Turialba, Sakajadima, Kirishima, in Shin Modake. And let's just get a current update. So, Shinmo has calmed down since the earlier eruption. That so we can probably go back to here. Yeah, there it is. So, if you come here, you can actually go check out 
the blasts. <coughs> and I'll just let this run for a minute because <coughs> it's glorious. But Popo Catapeto, Popo down here, has been quite active uh, for days with this hot fire top like this. And as I was checking that out, Yuki Z over here at Volcano Watch was enlarging Popo because I, I, I mentioned it, and Shinmo blew. And now we have a triple angle of Shinmo blowing. So just amazing stuff they're doing over there. I suggest you, highly suggest you go over and sub them. And that's a boom. So thank you, Volcano Watch, for that coverage. What's going on? Stratospheric radiation is increasing. We've been covering this for the last few days. I wanted to get you familiar with this graph. These are the statistics. Now, this is also happening all around the Northern Hemisphere and all around the globe. Why do we care? I'm going to leave you links to evidence of an increase in cosmic rays as the sun approaches minimum. So you can get familiar with the idea of why in these solar minimums there's more cosmic rays down in here in these low points. And as a, low, as a whole, cosmic rays increase as a whole. And there's where the graphic comes from we've been using. So read this short article to get yourself familiar with why cosmic rays increase during minimums. And that will make sense why explosive volcanic eruptions triggered by cosmic rays. This paper coming out June 2011 is the beginning of the consensus reality of what we're witnessing. Volcanoes as a bubble chamber. This is volcanoes with silica rich and highly viscous magma tend to produce violent explosive eruptions that result in disasters in local communities and that strongly affect the global environment. And they happen to be occurring during high cosmic ray flux. Now, why do we know this? I'm going to leave you the full text here on the relationship between cosmic rays, solar activity, and powerful earthquakes. Now, Kovalyov and Kovalyov <laughs> wrote this paper recently. This is 10 February 2015. And it's an excellent analysis of all the historical data, bringing you back into the Dalton, Wolf, Sporer, and Oort Minimum, Maunder, and Dalton. They checked it all the way back using the GISP-2 cores. They correlated solar minimums and co cosmic rays, and they came to a startling conclusion that it's not just the grand solar minimum that's affecting these. It's not the solar minimums. The cosmic rays are affecting them. That is the number one reason these volcanoes are erupting. And I have bad news for you folks. We are headed into unprecedented territory when it comes to cosmic rays. So when you start to look at some of these high cosmic ray flux periods where these asterisks are, these are major events, major earthquakes. So I'll leave you links to this article uh, on what's going on with cosmic rays Volcanoes and earthquakes. That's a heads up. And a positive lightning boom. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. Cosmic ray flux is at an all-time high, uh, leading to increased insanity over chemtrails, which are actually contrails. <laughs> These contrails are caused by increased cosmic ray flux in the atmosphere, causing them to appear to look like chemtrails. We're not saying on the Oppenheimer Ranch that there are no chemtrails, because there certainly are. In our area, they cloud seed, so there is cloud seeding. But the millions of people running around calling every contrail a chemtrail is really 